students often ask how to draw some of these polyatomic ions. So here what we have is um, we've got the phosphate ion, PO4, negative 3. So really one of the biggest things that students kind of struggle with is what do we do with this negative 3. So let's first off focus on the actual atoms that we have. So we've got PO4. So we've got one atom of phosphorus, four atoms of oxygen. So we pretty much are, are safe to say that phosphorus will be our central atom. And when we're drawing, um, pretty much, uh, you know, when we're, when, we've, when we're dealing with like five atoms or, um, or less, I like to use something called the cross method, where within the cross, the point in which the two lines meet is where we would put our central atom and at each point of that cross is where I would like to line up with my oxygens. So let's uh, draw our oxygen. So we've got oxygen one, we're gonna put oxygen two, oxygen three, and oxygen four. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our valence electrons for phosphorus and phosphorus if you look at the periodic table group 15 uh, so it's got five valence electrons so one two three four remember when we're drawing uh, Lewis dot diagrams or electron dot diagrams we draw one on each side until we get to number five and then at the fifth one that's when we uh, pair the electrons together so let's go over to um, the oxygen. Oxygen is group 16, so it will have six valence electrons. So we're gonna draw one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. We're gonna do the same thing with oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. We're going to do it again to this oxygen. One, two, three, four, five. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the electron on, draw it on this side and kind of not continue here just for, you'll see what I, what I mean when we start drawing um, the actual bonds. And the same thing here. So one, two, three, four. Uh, we're not going to draw our fifth one there. We're going to draw it five, and six. So notice all the oxygens that we've drawn have six valence electrons. The phosphorus in the center has five valence electrons. Now um, I drew them, I drew some of them in a, in a certain way and the reason for that is every time I, I have these single electrons this is what I like to call um, the bonding site really. The bonding site. So in other words, this is where the, um, the bonds are going to occur between the atoms. Now before I start to bond anything, I am going to um, show you these electrons right here now. We've got a minus three charge and the minus three means I have three extra electrons. That's really what it means. So I've got three extra electrons that I need to account for. Now think of it this way. Which one of these atoms is going to get those three electrons? Now no atom is going to get that, get all three. But here's a common thing that students might look at. They might look at it and go, well, why don't I put one, two, three with this central phosphorus? Right? But the thing is, once I put those three here, then there are no more bonding sites for phosphorus. So phosphorus is, will already have fulfilled its octet rule, right? similar to its noble gas. So it will not want to bond with anything. It's already stable. So it's not going to add three electrons here. In fact, these three electrons, these three extra electrons, are going to go to three different oxygen. So each one is going to be distributed with three 
different oxygens. So I'm going to draw one here. I'm going to draw another one here. And I'm going to draw another one here. Which, if you look at it, before I drew these electrons, each oxygen had two bonding sites, right? One, two here. Originally here, it was one, two. Same thing here, one, two. But now when I put in these three electrons, I've reduced the number of bonding sites with each oxygen. So what I'm going to do now, each of these oxygens that have picked up these extra electrons, okay, have now lost one more bonding site, which means it only has room for one bonding site. So what's going to happen is this bonding site is going to bond with that phosphor. Sorry about the uh, inaccuracy using this tablet. I'm going to form a bonding site here, and I'm going to form a bonding site here. So I have just formed three single bonds with phosphorus and three different oxygens, which now leaves me what happens with this oxygen here. And if you look at phosphorus, phosphorus has eight valence electrons right now. It's got five of its own, plus this one is sharing six, number seven here, and number eight. So we're thinking it's full, that's it. But if you look at it, at phosphorus, what happens? Phosphorus is in period okay, number three it's in the what we call it's got three energy levels and atoms in the nonmetals that have three energy that are in the um, uh, third energy level right or period number three or row or should we say row for those who don't know the term period row number three on the periodic table these nonmetals have the ability to go and do something called an expanded okay expanded octet so what happens is they can actually go beyond eight they can go beyond eight they can go to 10 electrons they can in fact even go up to 12 electrons and phosphorus is one of those that will have the ability to go beyond that so what's going to happen here is you see this pair we think okay this pair is not they're not a, it's not considered a bonding site but what in fact is going to happen is these electrons and let me try to erase them these electrons okay are actually going to almost not separate but we'll spread them out right and it will allow it will form bonding sites so in other words we will now form a bond, single bond here and here so now oxygen has its eight each one of these oxygens have their eight valence electrons but phosphorus, as we said, because it's in period number three, row number three, it has the ability to expand its octet to uh, eight, um, or sorry, to 10 electrons. Now, this is really messy to draw, right? This is really messy to draw. Uh, never hand this in. But how do we simplify this diagram? Well, as we said, we start with phosphorus. Let me uh, draw this a different color. So we start with phosphorus in the center we form three single bonds with three different oxygens and each oxygen has three unshared pairs of electrons right? one two one two one two one two one two one when we're simplifying, when we're cleaning up our diagram, we can start putting the electrons the way we want them, right? We know what they, they look like over here in our, uh, in our scrap work, right? And then what happens here with this oxygen up at the top? Well, this oxygen at the top here is bonded to phosphorus twice. So we draw two lines to show the double bond, right? So here we've got pretty much a double bond and around this oxygen which is different from the other oxygens we only have two unshared pairs one two okay 
But now, not only are we going to draw this, but we need to state the fact that we have picked up three extra electrons. So we put them in square brackets, and outside the square brackets, we include the negative three here to state that we've added three additional electrons, one to each one of these oxygens. And there you have it. This is what a phosphate ion, or a phosphate polyatomic ion, looks like in terms of its um, ball and stick model.